Hey, this is Brian with the Sea Chop. Today we're working on a 2004 to 2005 Dodge Ram. Uh, I'm going to show you how to strip down the leather seat covers for the driver's side bottom, and towards the end, we're going to show you how to reinstall the brand new seat cover on it. All right, to get started on the bottom, we need a couple tools. Very simple. I need a Phillips head screwdriver. I got that put on the impact, and um, a either a pry tool or a flathead screwdriver. So nothing crazy. Let me grab those out. I'll show you the first step. If you happen to have the power seats, you're going to have your power control panel here. There's going to be two Phillips screws. Uh, if you don't have power seats, you don't have to worry about taking that off. Also, you have the, the recline lever here. It's got a Phillips head screw in the middle of that. So, so grab my impact and go ahead and pull these out. All right. Easy as that. Set these to the side. Now this plastic bezel will just come off, there's that. Then we have our uh, power control buttons. Uh, they feed through the frame here and it's going to hook on, the wires are going to hook towards the rear. Uh, we'll go ahead and disconnect those so we can feed uh, this wire harness through. Okay, here's our gray connector here. This has the two-stage um, um, catch on this lock, so on this on this on this clip connection. So this little red button will push down, and then you can push in and pull the wire harness out. There it goes. Okay, so with that disconnected, we can start to pull this wire out, and it's just one long bundle of wires that feed all the way through underneath the frame. Now there is a metal, um, little metal bracket on the side of the seat that uh, it's gonna need to take one of the screws out so this has enough room to feed through. So there's a little Phillips head screw at the very bottom of that. I'm gonna pry that off, I'm gonna unscrew that real quick. Let me move this connection. You don't have to take it all the way out, just, you know, back it out halfway or so. There we go, Let's see if it'll feed through. Okay, now we got our wire harness, we can set it to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and put that little screw back in on the side. There we go. Okay, so the rest of our connections are gonna be, take our flathead screwdriver or a pry tool, and we'll go around the frame on the side. You got these two clips on the side here. There's one here and one here. These have the double catch. So you can get your flathead in and push in you get to pry out. Same thing here. On the top, we got one connection that rolls around the front and then clips underneath. So this, this clip is a complete roll. So we're going to try to get up underneath here and start to roll this thing backwards. And they're tight for it to hold on. So there we go. Okay, that rolls off. And then on the side over here, we got two more, or one more connection. Take our flathead or pry tool, push it on that, that's released. Now, we'll flip over to the back. Okay, so we've got one main plastic piece here. This one's pretty, not real tight, it's easy to get to. That undoes. You got another one here, one here, and one here. So one, two, three. And these are gonna be a little tighter. You're gonna want a flathead or a pry tool. Uh, and it's pretty sharp along the back, so you're going to get cut up if you don't use one of these. So we'll just kind of wedge in here in between the clip and the frame. There we go. This one be this little guy. There. This one here. There we go. And then also across the very back, we get this long strip of black, black material called Duon. It's got a clip all the way over here on the side. And so there's about a three inch clip or so that's hooking onto this carpet on the side. You can try to pry it apart. However, you can just, they will just slide apart. So just slide those out. It's a lot easier than trying to pry it apart. But that's that connection. 
and you slide it right back on there or and slide it off. So that's everything in terms of all the connections. Now we'll start pulling the cover up off of the phone. <coughs> Okay, so I'll usually just start in one of these corners and start pulling up on the cover. I don't want to, to completely take it off yet, just start to kind of turn it inside out on the seat. All right, now this cover Velcros down to the surface, so we're going to just slowly start peeling the Velcro off. If you just grab the cover and yank it off, then you, the, you run the risk of pulling the Velcro off of the um, foam cushion. So you don't want to do that. It's not the end of the world. If you do, you can glue it back down with some spray adhesive, but you want to just kind of work it back up slowly. Take one hand, push down on the Velcro that's, that's in the foam. Okay. Now our cover is free. You can see the Velcro that's on, sewn on the underneath side of the seat cover. That's what attaches to the foam. We'll set that aside. If you did happen to pull up some of the Velcro that's on the foam, uh, let me show you some spray adhesive you can use. This stuff here works pretty good. It's Dantac. I, you can get this on Amazon. They might have it at Lowe's or Home Depot. I know Lowe's and Home Depot will carry uh, like 3M spray adhesive. Um, they've got stuff for foam and rubber. That stuff works pretty good. But uh, if it does pull up, just spray some of this on there. Let it tack up really well. You hit it with some compressed air. Let it dry up real good before you put on the new, the new cover because uh, it's going to have some tension on it when you're setting it and you don't want it to pull back up because if it pulls back up, you have to take the cover back off, re-glue it, all that good stuff. So make sure the glue sets up real well and, the, and that Velcro is not coming up back up. So that is pretty much all there is involved in the bottom. It's pretty straightforward. A couple screws, some plastic, plastic clips, and one power connection if you happen to have full power seats. Okay, so now everything is stripped off, we need to go ahead and steam the foam. Uh, I'll grab the steamer real quick. So more than likely, if you've got an 04 or 05, it's got quite a few miles on it more than likely. The bottom foam is probably gonna be pretty hammered and you may wanna replace that. I'll show you uh, a new Durafoam cushion that we've got for that to replace this. This one happens to be in pretty decent shape. Um, it, and uh, there's some power control cutouts on the side that I don't want to carve up a new foam for, but I'll definitely show you, what you what is, what's involved in, in that cutout uh, for the side. So we're just going to go ahead and steam this one out just for the, uh, for the video here. So the steam will help puff the foam back up cl as close to its original shape as possible. If the foam's really demolished, it's not going to do that. I mean, it's going to swell up some, but if the foam's just completely crushed, uh, steaming, it's not going to do that much to it. Uh, you definitely wouldn't want to go ahead and replace it. Usually on something going back as far as 405, you're going you're gonna to want to put a new foam in there. Um, if you don't put a new foam in there, you're going to have some, um, a good bit of money and time tied up in trying to repair the foam and, and glue in new chunks of foam on the, the left edge from getting in and out. Uh, at that point, it's, it's just a whole lot better to, to replace it than try to to patch it up because you're going to have close to the same cost in, in, in repairing all the foam and it's not going to be nearly as good as a new one that's really got really good dense foam in it and doesn't have any wear at all on it, especially if you're going to keep the truck. So I'm going to just pull it off the frame. Now this is a commercial steamer. It's a big steamer. It runs for you know quite a while. Once it gets uh, once it gets hot, um, I'll show you another little steamer I'll use here. Just keep it around. It's kind of a backup. Uh, the heat's up real quick, but it just doesn't steam as long. It'll run you know three, four, five minutes at a time, and then you got to refill with water and go again. Uh, but it's real cheap. You know, it's an Amazon you know twenty dollar little steamer, garment steamer. Uh, but it works good as a, as a backup for us here, um, but I've used it quite a bit because it, it heats up in a matter of a couple minutes versus waiting 20 plus minutes for the, the big one to heat up. Um, and it works, it works just as well. You want to take your time on this, make sure that foam, the steam really penetrates down into the foam uh, so it swells up the most it will, most it'll, you know, it'll swell just for a certain amount of time and then it'll 
kind of max out and then just then move on to the next spot. But just going over it slow, letting it really penetrate deep into the uh, into the foam, get it to swell back up. That's looking pretty good. So once you steam it, you want to let it uh, cool down. You want to dry it off, take, so, take your air compressor, blow some air on it, get all the moisture out of the foam, uh, make sure it cools down because uh, it's still real soft and pliable when it's, been, when it's hot from all the steam. So let that take some, let it dry out, take the compressor, blow air on it, cool it off, make sure it's, uh, it's firm back up and it's not hot and it's not holding any of that moisture because you don't want to wrap the new cover on there with all the moisture in there. So let me show you the other option, which is more than likely what you're going to need to do on uh, you know, a model this far back, especially if you're keeping it, is you want to replace it with the, the new Durafoam cushion. You can see that some of the Velcro is a little bit different form, you know, uh, layout than, than this old original one. Um, the reason being is this, one, this, this design here will work for the cloth ones, the vinyl, uh, the leather for the Laramie, stuff like that. So it's, it, it'll go across all the different uh, models uh, for the, for depending on what type of cover you have. Uh, but it still goes on the same way. Um, you don't need to steam this thing out, obviously, because it's going to be brand new. Um, but there is one thing you'll need to do if you have the power seats, depending on if you got a Laramie or an ST. Uh, if you've got power on the side, there's a little control panel that you trim out on the side here. So there's a little bit of a raised line on the foam on this side. You can see it here. And you'll need to trim that piece out if you have the power seats. You can see on this original one, it's got power. You can see how it's notched out here. That would need to be cut. Easiest way to cut that um, would be if you got one around. Just a this is just an electric fish fillet knife, you know, carving knife. This is a Walmart rig. This isn't anything special, anything expensive. Um, this is easy to cut with. Uh, you can also do it with a pair of scissors or a razor blade uh, to trim that thing, tr to trim it on the side. Good thing is you've got the little guidelines of where you need to cut out. Uh, but this is pretty easy to trim it with if you got one of these around. Um, but yeah, that's the one trim modification you need to do to the foam based on if you have power or no power. So Dura foam cushion, 04 to 5 RAM from the base model all the way up to Laramie. This guy will work for you. Uh, I'm not going to trim this out because I don't want to uh, have it pre-trimmed and send it to somebody and they have uh, manual seats and they've got a hole cut out inside. So I'm going to continue the install on this old steamed original one. but. Man, do yourself a favor, get a new foam. It's going to make a massive, massive difference on the feel of the seat when you put it, when you put the new foam in there. When you put the new cover on, it's going to look new. This is going to make it feel new when you actually hop in that truck, when you're done with the install and sit on it and just remind you what the truck was like when it was brand new. This thing is really, really nice. I'm going to set it to the side and start on the install. Okay, so we got our leather cover. I'm going to, so the factory one, there's, they, didn't, they don't put Velcro on these corners for some reason. Um, the cover's gonna have Velcro sewn all the way in a loop. I like adding some Velcro to these corners just so it holds down there. Uh, I just think it looks better. Uh, it, holds it, it holds it in tighter. Uh, for some reason, a lot of the manufacturers do that. They'll leave it off on the, on the little corners. I don't know why. Um, in my opinion, it makes it a whole lot better. I just got some Velcro um, that I can get at Walmart, Amazon. Uh, it's got an adhesive back, but I still glue it on in these corners. So if you are going with the original one, let me find my Velcro. Here we go. This is just a came in, you know, here's a box, just a bundle of this. I'll grab the, what they call the hook side, which is the prickly side, and trim a little piece and peel off the back sticky. I'll take some uh, spray adhesive. A lot of times I use this, Dantac. It's just a spray adhesive get this on amazon about 15 bucks uh you can use 3m they've got a lot of different stuff you can get at lowe's and home depot i think lowe's may even carry this stuff as well but a rattle can of this stuff really helps out glue shoot, the, shoot that uh, glue on both sides on the foam and on the back of the uh, velcro stick it in place just to kind of round that out in my opinion it's just a better way of doing it when you got it apart that's the time to go ahead and add a little piece in there it's going to make it hold down a little bit better on those corners so i've already got this glued in i'll set this to the side now I'll grab my cover. So I got the cover flipped inside out. All, so all the flaps are sticking up. Here's my bottom Velcro. I'm gonna line it up on here and attach it. So 
I'm gonna fold the back up a little bit so I can see this Velcro here. Pull it back some. I'm gonna set my center right in the middle. I'm gonna set that first and then I'm gonna work my way to the sides. You can visually see, you know, the white uh, Velcro loop, the fuzzy side that's on the cover and you can see the Velcro hook that's glued into the foam. And that way you can see if you got it pulled left or right, you want to make sure it's centered up. And once that's centered, then I'll go ahead and bring my back center down and attach straight down right in the middle. So I'm hooked hard right in the center. I hadn't done the outside yet, just hooked in the center. So I want to try to, when I'm hooking the rest of this Velcro, I want to pull the cover a little bit. So I'm going to grab underneath this little lip here. It gives me something to kind of pull on. So I'm going to pull out this way. So I'm anchored in the middle. I'm going to pull this corner out this way and start attaching my Velcro through that curve. When I get to the curve, I'm going to stop. But I got that anchored now. Over here, I'm going to do the same thing. If some of it's already anchored, I'll pull it back up till I get to about the midpoint there. And once again, hook underneath here with your finger, pull out away, and start pushing down with the other thumb, it anchoring into the Velcro. What that's doing is just stretching the cover um, so that it's pulled nice and tight. It's going to help eliminate any kind of ripples and, and uh, crease mark, crease lines or anything on the center part because it's just basically pulling it tight and anchoring it. If you just push it straight down, uh, you could wind up with some more rippling and stuff like that on the center of it. Uh, so having it pulled and stretched uh, really helps eliminate a lot of that and eliminate you having to go you know, un-Velcro it and, and reset it again. So the next seams I'm going to do are the, the rest of them that are going forward. I'm going to do the same type deal. I'm anchored all the way to that turn. So I'm going to get my hand back here. So this is where I'm anchored to. So, so I'm here. I'm going to hold pressure there. I'm going to grab the front of the cover and pull. Just give it a little bit of attention. You don't have to just pull like crazy, but just get a little bit of attention on it and then work your, your other hand, working it down that seam and attaching it. Give it a good press. Same thing on this side. I'll start my finger in the corner. Keep pressure there. Pull the cover forward. Now you can see the front. You can see the face of it when, you, when you're pulling it to see if you get a bunch of, you pull too far, you're gonna get a bunch of different lines too far left, you get in these lines, you know, stuff like that. So you want to just keep the nice even pressure on it, make sure you're not getting a bunch of pucker lines in it and go forward with it. So that's looking pretty good. Now we'll wrap it around the corners and we'll, we'll be able to kind of reevaluate and see if this is all set really good. So to do the corners, take one hand on the inside and on, this, you know, on your seam, your stitch line on the, on the inside of the cover here, I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to be touching that, that seam line on this front corner. So I'm going to take my other hand, I'm going to push in on the foam, bring it in like that, and then I'm going to roll this hand, always co having constant contact with the cover, and roll it down. You don't want to try to just pull it over here and then pull it down, because it's going to be a whole lot harder to get this out uh, and manipulate it and get it on. It's a whole lot easier if you keep some nice constant tension on it, push in on the foam, and roll that corner over. It's sitting about like that. If nothing's gonna be perfect until we get on the frame and hook the clips to get tension all the way around it. But when you start off like this, it's a whole lot better than if you just pulled it over and tried to yank it from the top down. So we'll do the same thing on this side, hand inside on the seams, push in on the foam, roll that corner over. There we go. It's looking good. Okay, now we'll go ahead and drop the foam onto the frame so we got some structure to underneath there and we'll start wrapping all of our clips and stuff around on the sides. So, first I'm gonna grab the back of the foam right here and I'm gonna try to feed it through. Push through here to help, help get it through. It'll need to come all the way around. So this, it has a big flap on the back that's gonna cover over the metal frame. Let me get you a better shot of that real quick. So make sure that this foam piece comes all the way through the frame and, it, and it's going down. So it, it kind of covers up this metal frame at the back. That way you know you've got it seated all the way, all the way back. 
and it's there. So make sure it's there. If it gets wadded up on the inside of here, then the cover's going to, it's not going to look good. It's not going to pull tight. You're going to get a lot of ripples. This definitely needs to come all the way through and start to kind of cover up that metal. It won't go all the way to the bottom, but you want to cover it up. Okay. Now we can also feed through. We got two flaps on the back that'll feed through. I'm just going to stick that through. We got one other piece. Actually, I'm going to start a little bit different because we got, check this out here up top. So we, there's a plastic panel that's sewn in the back here. So I'm going to, it's going to be harder to, uh, once I, if I stuff these through first, it's going to be hard to get this to go through and then roll over. So I'm going to do it and turn it like this and start stuffing through. that through feel underneath there's a couple of these little black felt kind of material called do on this 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 material make sure that all these are fed through there we go there's these little clips on the very ends, on these very corners. Make sure that these get through as well, because these are going to hook underneath that. There's another one on this side, so it's kind of bound up inside there. So let's kind of dig in there with our finger and find that little clip. There we go. Okay, here's our other one. So we've got three clips, that, there, and there. And then this clip will go over top of this one once it's hooked on, so you just have carpet trim at the back. All right, let's hook the... Let's work our way around from the front. We'll go to the front, we'll do the two sides, and then at the very end, we'll hook the, uh, the clips on the back of the, uh, the frame. So let's tilt this up. This is a little bit different than a lot of clips. Not as intuitive. Let me show you how this works. So here's our clip on the very front. So normally, you would, logic would say it would just wrap around and hook onto the frame like that. But it's a little different, because this thing makes a complete roll goes all the way over, over, back again, and then pushes up into the frame to hook onto that. So once it's clipped, all you see is, or feel is the, the material all the way around, all the way around the frame, so you don't see the clip, you don't see anything underneath there. So here what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull this tight. I'm gonna make a first roll like this, get it to the metal frame. Another roll and push it straight up into the, there we go. You hear that big snap? That's what it hooks on. So this thing's completely rolled all the way around. All you feel is leather all the way around through. So we'll go work down our sides. Okay, so this is our left side towards the door. Here's where our power control panel goes. We'll have to make a trim cut in the cover to get that back on. However, here's a clip here. And there's another clip down here at the bottom. So we've got a clip up top, this clip, and there's another one down here at the bottom right here, this guy. So these are double clips. So you can see on the side view, you see there's two loops. There's a loop here and a loop on this side, so they can catch on both sides. Good thing about that is it gives you something to, uh, you can take a screwdriver or a pry tool or something in there, and you can push in to get it around. Because it's going to hook onto this metal bar right here, and the bottom's going to hook on the same kind of bar right at the bottom. So I'm going to grab a little pry tool. You can hook, just stick your pry tool right there. That gives you some leverage to be able to push in. There we go. Make sure it seats down in there. Perfect. Next one, bottom, pry tool again. And we'll push in, get it there, snap it on. There we go. Perfect. Those two are hooked. It's just a whole lot easier having that double catch where you can get something like a pry tool to be able to push it 
and get you leverage to be able to push it into the frame because there's a lot of sharp edges underneath here. If it was just a regular cut clip that just had one edge that curled, it makes it a whole lot easier to try to get your fingers in there and hands in there to try to push it far enough to get it to wrap around there. So it just makes it a little bit easier having the right clips on there for this. It should be similar on the other side. Let's roll this guy around. Okay, seat belt, slip that out of the way. We got one clip on this side, double clip like it was on the other side as well. It's gonna hook onto this piece of the frame right there. Okay, that hooked on quite nice. Now let's get to the back. Okay, so we got four total clips on the back here. So, make sure we can see all this. We've got, let's flip this up, that has the plastic in it. So we have this clip here. This is gonna wrap around the hook here. And then we have the little clips on the very end. This, let's see. Get this little guy here. This is gonna come in, hook up underneath here. Same thing on the other side, little clips gonna hook underneath there. So I'm gonna get in a little bit better position so I can do that. But that's where their the first round is gonna clip on. Okay, so. Here's this. To get a little bit more uh, leverage, when I grab this clip here, I'm going to roll it a little bit so that I can pull, get some back pressure here, and give me some more slack, and then I can unwind it. You don't want to just grab the clip where it's sewn here and just yank like hell on there because you could stretch it or, or tear it across there, pulling that much tension on it. So if you roll this thing up a little bit, then you can, you can give a nice pull and give you some slack and then unroll it basically around, clips on. Same thing on these corners. If you need to pull slack, don't grab the clip and just yank on it because you can potentially rip that thing off. So I'm gonna grab deeper down into the fabric here and get my tension and then get this guy to wrap around. There we go. Next side. There we go. These aren't that crucial. If something happens or tears or whatever, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but they're sewn on there. That's where they clip on. Uh, if they aren't there, weren't sewn on, it's not that big of a deal because you still have this massive, you know, eight inch clip here in the center. So this piece pulls all the way across and the hooks onto another piece of carpet over here. Let me feed that through a little bit. Okay, so on the side of the seat, we got this carpet that runs underneath the seat belt here. There's a clip right here that's sewn on. This clip needs to get, so here we go. Let's get the carpet fit all the way back through here. And that's gonna roll around and that long strap on the back is gonna wrap around to this. So let me try get over here. Okay, so this strip here is gonna come all the way across. It's got a clip on it and it's gonna wrap around and clip to this piece right there there and that locks together now we'll take this carpet flap wrap it back around the frame hook it on so okay now we're completely trimmed out you got all all you see is carpet all the way around carpet edge comes around the corner here seat belt goes up your side that's all trimmed out so now we'll uh get to the top surface of the cover and get it all adjusted and looking smooth okay clips are on now we need to kind of massage and work out this cover and get it fitting on there just right. Uh, all the edges are clipped, looking pretty good. So here's what I need to do is I need to I need to help get rid of a lot of these ripples and stuff here. So what I'm gonna do is pull the try to work the cover out. So I'm gonna take my thumb starting on this seam here. I'm gonna push the pushing the cover out this way and then with these fingers here I'm gonna try to push the foam in in a sense pulling getting working the leather out further. Let's see what we can do on working this. 
So with these ripples kind of going this way, it seems like the side of the cover here needs to go back. So I'm gonna grab kind of the side here and pull back and kind of massage the cover back some. Help get rid of those ripples. Also swiping this way and back. Okay, see that's looking a whole lot better. Just pulled back some like that. We'll see once we heat it up and steam it and stuff too, we'll see what we can adjust back on it. Okay, let's do the same kind of stuff on this side. Pull the leather, pull and scraping the leather back with these fingers. Pull here, then push in on the foam and really get it to roll down the side some. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. So I'm gonna see these couple strips here. I'm gonna see what I can do to get those guys out. Maybe I'll just steam it. See if I can work this forward a little bit. So that looks pretty good without steam so far. Got a lot of those, those wrinkles kind of worked out just by massaging the leather, rubbing it on there. It's getting a little bit warm from the friction of my hands, just rubbing on it. So that'll, that eliminated the good bit of that stuff. So we'll come back with the steamer and the heat gun and to help uh, just soften it up even more, really stretch it, smooth it out, just rubbing all the edges of it, get it good and, uh, and, and mold it onto this foam, take the heat gun, come back over, dry it, heat it, it's going to be fit real nice. So we're going to kick the steamer back on and get to steam in the sink first. Okay, now we're going to grab the steamer, steam this thing out, take the heat gun and uh, dry it all out and really tighten everything up. The heat, the steam is going to really help kind of mold and shape the cover onto the foam. Um, I know earlier I was using the, the regular commercial steamer. I'm going to show you the little cheapo backup that I keep around. This little guy, this thing is like 20 some odd bucks on Amazon. This thing works great, holds five or six ounces or something of, of water, it heats up in a matter of like two minutes and you're good to go. This thing will help out and this thing works really well. Um, but have, keep a steamer around for your install. If you don't have one, order one on Amazon or go to Walmart or Target or something, pick one up. It makes a big difference uh, for your, on the install, uh, steaming the foam as well as steaming the cover after it's installed. So let's grab the regular steamer and steam this out. If you don't have a heat gun, hair dryer will work too. Um, I just like getting a little more heat, have the heat gun versus a, a hair dryer. But I have this guy ready to go. Alright, now we're rolling. So I'm just gonna steam over the whole surface by this thing, heating the leather up, gets it soft and pliable, really helps it mold on to that foam. Especially if you put a new Durafoam in there, the sucker's gonna be fitting really tight, really nice on there, because you got really good new dense firm foam underneath there. Um, you're gonna wanna steam it, let it relax a little bit, and let it kind of mold on there. Just like breaking in a glove or a pair of boots or anything like that, same kind of deal. This just kind of speeds up the the break-in process versus just riding around on it for six months in car sitting in the hot sun and stuff like that. So let's just steam away here. The steam can't get it's not going to get too hot to to mess up anything, um, leather or vinyl or whatever material you uh, may happen to have on there. Um, cloth, I don't steam the cloth covers out when I put them on, but uh, leather and vinyl I definitely want to steam out. Um, but it's, this can't get too hot to, to hurt the cover. However, the heat gun, if you keep the heat gun in one space too long, it can get it too hot and it can, can shrink and dry up the leather, you know, get it way too hot. So 
when I hit the heat gun on it, I keep my hand on it constantly on the leather the entire time, wherever I'm shoot, uh, shooting with the, with the heat gun. Uh, if it's too hot to keep my hand there, I need to definitely move on to the next spot because you don't want to get it too hot. But that's kind of my gauge, keep my hand on there, feel how hot the leather is. If it's too hot to keep my hand on, move around. So we will have to make some trim cuts on the side of the seat for the power controls and for the, uh, the lean back uh, knob lever to go on the side. On these I typically want to make sure the cover is sitting good and I'm happy with it. I don't need to pull it back up and adjust any Velcro or something. Make sure I don't have any massive lines in it. Uh, but, so that's why I'm going to go ahead and steam it out first and make sure I'm happy with the top surface. Uh, the front face surface of the, of the install, make sure I'm, I'm good with all that before I make my trim cuts. Because if we make the trim cuts now and then steam it and go through it all and there's still some ripples or something in there that you don't like and you need to adjust the Velcro a little bit, then depending on how much you got to move it, it may move your holes off a little bit on the side. And if you already have the hole pre-cut, then you're going to be left with seeing a gap there where you can see into the frame. So we don't want that to happen. That's why I'm going to steam this. Usually I steam it the last thing. Uh, once everything's completed, but I'm gonna go ahead and steam it before we make those trim cuts because the plastic panel on the side of the seats for these 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 dodges from 04 to 5 There's not that much room for forgiveness It's a smaller little panel on the side versus this huge piece of plastic that goes all the way down the side of the seat so Just Trying to hedge our bet make sure we don't screw anything up All right, I'm gonna flip over to the heat gun now an area you definitely want to avoid with the heat gun is any of the carpeted sides, carpet area. That stuff, you hit it, just barely breathe on it with this heat gun and it's going to just shrink up like a raisin. So any side, like the sides here, this carpet all down the side, I'm going to keep my hand over that while I'm heat gunning the, the leather strip. Just make sure it doesn't get down to it. That's looking really good. So I'm gonna set, we're done heating. Basically dried the cover out. Um, didn't need that much more heat because uh, it's sitting really nice and I don't have any bunch of ripples or, or lines or marks and stuff in there. It's sitting just the way I want it. Now we'll switch over and start to trim some of the holes on the side for the control panels. So let's move this to the side too. Scissors. Get you a good pair of scissors, and let's show, the, look at the panels and stuff that we're going to be putting on on the side. Here's our control bezel, here's our lumbar, or not our lumbar, our lean back lever. So the large, big coarse screw here, that goes for the, uh, the lean back. These two tall, long um, Phillips are this control bezel. So you don't have a whole lot of room for error. This isn't a massive bezel that goes over the side. This piece is what screws on the side of the seat right here. Let's see, probably goes this way. We'll see when we get the control panel up with the, uh, the switches up. So here's our switch pack. Got it pulled off. Um, let's flip the seat around. Get the best angle we can to show you guys some trim cutting on the side. Because once it's cut, it's cut. <laughs> so you can always trim a little bit more. I'm going to throw another camera up and get some good shots of the side of this. I need something to mark with. I'm so I'm going to get a piece of chalk will work. Um, a little um, little grease pen will work fine if you got um, some, um, you know, welder's chalk, the welding uh, uh, deal to mark on metal with. Sometimes that'll show up on here, but a piece of chalk works great. Uh, I'm going to go see what I can find real quick to. Uh, to mark this out, so we'll be able to flip up underneath here. We'll be able to feel um, the the opening here, and then we're going to go ahead and start trimming trimming the hole out on the side, so we can feed the wires back through and get the control panel back on. Okay, I got a little white grease pen uh, to be able to mark on the side of the leather, um, so we can find our cutout here and what we need to mark and, and trim out. So the good thing is you can feel. The edge pretty well pretty easy on the side of this on where we need to cut what we don't want to do is cut the exact size of the hole 
cut out for the side where you feel the empty void in there through the metal. You want to cut a whole lot smaller strip because we can still feed this thing through. We just need to keep mocking it up to see to make sure that this thing fits in there. We basically really need the, the cables to get through. We don't need that whole box cut out. Because if you cut the hole pretty big and when you sit in the seat, um, it's gonna pull up on the sides. So if it's cut the exact size of the metal opening, then the top material on the very top of that is gonna pull up over um, the, uh, where the, where the control, where the plastic bezel is on the side. So if it's cut right to the edge, and there's not much material below this line. When you sit down, this seat's gonna, the cover's gonna pull up some because it's gonna, the cover's gonna kind of collapse in. When you sit down in the weight in the middle, the seat's gonna kind of push in where you sit down and lift up on that, and you don't want the edge to show. So we're gonna start pretty small in the middle. Here's my edge. Okay, there's my bottom line. I'm going to kind of give a little mark of where my bottom line is. This is about, this isn't going to be what I'm going to cut. I'm just going to give my idea of my window size. So here's my vertical, right in there. Here's the top edge. And here's the back corner. So that's about the size of the opening on the side of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut. I'm probably going to do a little oval right about in here to start out with. And then I'm going to continue to make small cuts along the way. So when you're poking in the first time to get it, to get all the way through the leather so you can cut, if you have your scissors open like this and you're trying to push in to puncture through it, Whenever it actually the scissors give, once it punctures through, this side here, the open scissor, you're gonna have, you're gonna really run a high risk of gouging the leather there. So like if you stab through there, and then all of a sudden the scissors push all the way through, this sharp blade can cut the leather there. That is from personal experience. I've done that before, done that once, and uh, never again. So when I'm puncturing through, close the scissors. Put where you're gonna go, and hit the back of your scissors punch it through or take a little razor blade and cut you a slit either way. So I want to start to cut this little piece on the side. Now you got two layers because you got the leather on the side plus you've got the foam backing that's sewn on the underneath side too. So we got to get through both layers. See if my plug will fit through that. Okay, even my control wire won't fit through that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut some more. I'm gonna cut towards the bottom. That'll go through there now. That's good. Okay, I'm gonna look through and see the path of where this cable needs to feed.
So here's our hole on the side. The cable it snakes through and it hooks on all the way back here on the back. So there's a uh, right through here underneath side of the frame. Here's the uh, the white the, the white the gray clip that this is going to plug into. So this guy is going to be sitting like so through here. So it's going to have to snake through. Here is the side right through here that this cable needs to come through. Our hole is right here. Cable needs to come through there and then come down. Now I'm probably going to run it underneath this clip. So I'm going to take this clip off. There we go to feed that through. So I'm going to see if I can get, see if this fits through that area there. Yeah, it's a little tight. So there's some screws on this metal bracket that you can undo. I can probably undo this one Phillips at the bottom here. There's three. There's going to be a screw here, a screw at the top, and a screw at the top middle here. So I'm going to undo this one and see if that gives me enough separation where I can feed this wire through there. Okay. Now let's try to, let's see if it, yeah, plenty of room. Okay. I'll snake this guy through. So, I'm going to stick the wires underneath there. I want to go ahead and put my screw back in this first. We're going to get everything stacked on top of each other and in the way. So, let's get our little Phillips back in here. Perfect. Tuck this down. This will come through the bottom like this. I'm going to go ahead and hook this back on. Let me get my pry tool. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so now this will go. Okay, so I need to make a little bit more cut on the side. I'll show you what I'm running. Into. So here are all my wires. The back, some of the wires here at the back are hitting the, the leather right there. So I'm gonna trim probably just a little slit down the side, just going straight down, maybe a half inch or so. You have a little bit more room for those wires to sit. Make sure you don't cut a wire, but there we go. Get a little relief for it there. That's looking better. Just keep on feeding. I'm going to take this clip back off until I get the wire fed all the way back and clipped on. Okay. That's off. Okay, so we've got our control panel. Our power control is fed through here. So what has to happen is this, we got to trim some more at the bottom. I know we just trimmed a little bit to get the wires to come all the way down. So this gray bar right here, gosh, the light is just in the way. Okay, so we've got the wires for the, for the control module stuck through there. We're going to need to trim out some more on the side. I'm going to show you the, on the control panel. So here's this gray bar right through here. That whole bar has to fit through this hole, and it's going to fit on the back side of this little catch right here. So it's going to feed all the way through there and turn the corner and sit flush on the, behind it. So it's going to line up there. So we definitely need to trim a longer slit across here for this gray thing to feed through the frame and then roll back up like that. So um, let me grab scissors 
And let's trim a little bit more. You can always trim a little more. You can't put it back on. So here's my line. There's my edge there. Okay. So. for that edge. Bottom, I need to come down a good bit. Oh, I'm out of the way. Okay. Pretty close. Let's trim a little bit more. Okay, looks like I got the bottom lip through. So now, on our side, now you can see that we still got the leather underneath this back under here, so this won't be able to sit completely flush. I don't wanna cut all of that out. What I wanna do is I wanna cut a, probably maybe a 45 degree on these edges, and so that this material will fold back into the into the side of it so uh, instead of having a complete hole so I'm gonna come through and cut a you know, 45 up something like that cut a little bit tail off there let's see what kind of shroom that gives me up top well mark where my corner is there Cut a little bit closer to that. There we go. 